Hello, my Yarny friends. I'm Sarah Satch. Welcome or welcome back to my crochet channel. I'm super excited about our Friday Fun Day video today. Our pattern is a double thick watermelon pot holder or hot pad. You can make it in a full slice or a half slice just by making one and folding it over. I love the way that they turned out. I made these out of cotton yarns because you know acrylic yarns can be dangerous around hot things. If you put a hot pot right out of the oven, it can melt your hot pad or burn your surface. It can also, if you're using an acrylic hot pad to maybe hold a handle, it can burn your hand. So you can certainly make these out of acrylic if you want to but I prefer to make them out of cotton yarns. And I love that how these turned out. We started with the red, went to pink, a thin line of white, a little thicker bright green, and then we ended with a darker green. And I really love them. This one I used a little bit darker green, which I did use on this one on this side. And then I finished it with the lighter green. And I kind of like the way this back side one turned out because I did a light, a darker, and then a lighter green that's sort of in between those colors. And I just used cottons that I had on hand. They're super fun. They make great decorations. You could hang these up and use them as decorations. For me, I just love watermelon decorations. I have a watermelon jar cozy. You could stitch that up and use it for glasses of iced tea. I also have a watermelon coaster. I'll put those two links down in the notes under the video so you can find those as well as the link for this crochet pattern with pictures and notes. I'll put that link down in the notes under this video as well. To make my watermelon slices, I used cotton yarns because keep in mind, if you're making these as a decoration, you can make them out of acrylic but acrylic will melt when it comes in contact with a hot pot or something like that and you might burn your hand or your surface you're going to put it on. I used all medium weight number five cotton yarns. This is peaches and cream. This is peaches and cream. These two are I love this cotton and this one I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's just a cotton that I had and I wanted a darker green for this portion and then of course some black. Depending on whether you're making two round slices or a half slice depends, of course, on the amount of yarns that you'll need. You're going to need about an ounce for the red and then a half ounce for all the other colors. And so you have to do that twice if you're making the bigger, you know, round flat slice opposed to one that we just make one and fold it over and stitch it. I love them both. I think if you're going to make some, you need to make both because they're just so much fun to make. All right, so we're gonna stitch with our H hook, which is a five millimeter crochet hook. You're gonna need your needle for weaving in ends and for also sewing on our watermelon seeds. And then of course you're gonna need your scissors. So whether you're making a flat round slice of watermelon or the half slice of watermelon, the circle itself is done exactly the same. For this one, we'll just make two rounds and for this one, we'll make one and this one's folded over, and this one we're going to stitch two together. Now I already have one made for this one, and then I, of course I've already completed this one, and so I'm going to make another one and then show you how to put them all together. All right, let's get started. We're going to begin with our slip knot, and we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. We'll join that into a circle and make that loop and then we'll make that stay knot. Alrighty. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put our hook in, pull up a loop, <clears throat> and chain three. And now we're going to stitch nine more double crochets in that chain five loop. And you'll notice that I am stitching over my tail of yarn. That way I can pull that tightly and close up that hole in the center. Now, if you prefer to use a magic circle or a magic ring or some other method of making your beginning circle, <clears throat> it's totally fine with me. 
whatever way works best for you. Just make sure you've got 10 double crochets in your circle. And of course, we are counting that chain three as our beginning circle. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So we have 10 double crochets. We're going to join to that chain three with a slip stitch. And we'll go ahead and chain three. But before we do row two, we're gonna turn it over, give a good pull on that beginning tail and we'll go ahead and weave this in. You can do it later if you want to. I just like to go ahead and get it over with. Then I don't have to worry about it later. Now in a project like what we're doing, we're changing colors several times. And so we are going to have some weaving in to do. But the nice thing about this project is all of that will be hidden on the inside of our hot pad or pot holder. Alrighty, so here is row one. We have 10 double crochets. We joined to our chain three and chained three. Now we're ready for row two. Our chain three counts as our first double crochet. So we're going to double crochet in that same stitch as our chain three. And then we'll go to our next double crochet and stitch two double crochets. Now we'll stitch two double crochets in each of the double crochets around. So for row one, we had 10, and row two, we're going to have 20 double crochets because we placed two in each. We placed a double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three, and then two in each around, so we have 20 double crochets. We're going to join to the chain three with a slip stitch and chain three. And row three is pretty much the same as row two. We just have more stitches. So we're going to double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three, and then two double crochets in each of those double crochets all the way around. And this is going to make for a nice flat um, pot holder, not double crochet. <laughs> This particular beginning is what I like to use when I want a nice flat circle. All right, so we're just going to place two double crochets in each of those 20 double crochets around. Then we'll join back to our chain three. I have completed row three. We stitched two double crochets in each of our stitches around. And remember, we put one in the same stitch as our chain three. So for row three, we have 40 double crochets. And now we're ready for row four. And this is our last row in our red. So what we're going to do, our chain three counts as our first. We're not gonna stitch in the same stitch as our chain three this time. We're going to stitch one double crochet <clears throat> in the next two double crochets. So that gives us three double crochets. Then in the next double crochet, we're going to stitch two double crochets. One and two. Our double crochet here was our chain three, and then we stitch one in each of the next two, and then two in the next. And so our repeat around for row four is one double crochet in the next three. One, two, and three. And then two double crochets in the next stitch. One, 
one, two, three, and then two in the next. And we'll repeat that. One double crochet in the next three. There we, oops. <laughs> one, two, three, and then two double crochets in the next. One and two. All right, and then we'll repeat that all the way around and join back to our chain three. I have completed row four. We repeated one double crochet in the next three, two in the next. We joined to our chain three, but we didn't chain three because we're going to cut our red yarn and we're going to bring in the nice bright pink. So we'll bring that in, snug that down because we'll have to weave that in later and chain three. One, two, three. Now we're going to continue the way we're doing increases. We're just using a different color on this row. And so what we're going to do is we're going to double crochet in the next three. Our chain three counts as one and we're doing three more double crochets. And then we'll stitch two double crochets in the next. One and two. So it's similar to what we did on the previous row only we have one, two, three, four double crochets and then two together. So one, two, three, four, and two double crochets in the next stitch. One and two. And this pink row is to give the appearance that the red of the watermelon is getting a little bit lighter because the next row will be white. And when you mix pink and, or red and white, you get pink. All righty, so for row five, we're doing one double crochet in the next four, two, three, and four and then two double crochets in the next double crochet. And we'll repeat this working all the way around and join back to our chain three. All right, so we did four double crochets and two in the next all the way around for row five. We joined to our chain three, but we didn't chain three because we're going to bring in our white yarn I've already cut my pink off. We'll snug that down and we're only going to chain one. And that's because we're going to do single crochets on this row. So we're gonna go right in that first stitch and stitch one single crochet in the first five. So one, two, three, four, five, and then we'll do two single crochets in the next, one and two. Then one single crochet in the next five, one, two, three, four, five, and two single crochets in the next, one and two. All right, and so we're stitching one single crochet in the next five, two in the next, and repeating all the way around. And that's gonna give us that nice thin line of white. I have completed row six. We did one, two, three, four, five single crochets, and then two single crochets in the next. We're going to join to that first single crochet with a slip stitch, and I've already cut my yarn because we're bringing in are green. And this is the light green first. And we're only going to chain one. And let's get everything snug down in the back. 
And I know we have a lot of color changes, but remember, that's going to be on the inside of our project. We can weave those in and it won't be messy. Okay, so what we're going to do on row seven is we're going to be stitching half double crochets. So we're going to yarn over, we're going to stitch one half double crochet in each of the next six. One, two, three, four, five. Oop, got a little knot there in my green. Six, and then two half double crochets in the next. One and two. And we're doing a half double crochet because we want this row to be a little bit bigger than the white row, but not as tall as our double crochet rows. All right. Let's get this snag out of our yarn and we'll repeat one half double crochet in each of the next six stitches. There's two, three, four, five, and six, and then two half double crochets in the next one and two. And we'll repeat this, working all the way around our circle. I have completed that light green row. We did six uh, half double crochets and two half double crochets and repeat all the way around. And then we join to our first half double crochet with a slip stitch. So again, I'm going to cut my yarn. And I know we did a lot of color changes in this one, but it definitely gives the appearance of a true slice of watermelon. All right, now I'm going to bring in my deeper green. Now, I didn't have any more of this deeper green. This is deep, but it's not as deep as that one. All right, which is fine because then you'll see the stitches when I put it together with the big flat one, or I should say the big flat slice. All right, so we're gonna bring that in Snug that down, and this row is our last row around, and so we're going to do single crochets. So we'll go right in that first stitch, and we'll stitch a single crochet. And so on this row, we're going to stitch seven single crochets. So there's one, two, three, four, five and six and seven and then two single crochets in the next one and two and so our repeat for row eight is one single crochet in the next seven one two three four five six and seven and two single crochets in the next one and two and so it gets a little darker so it has a little bit more of an appearance of the rind of the watermelon all right and so we'll repeat this seven and two all the way around and join back to our first single crochet so i've now completed that row of single crochets with the darker green I'm going to join to that first single crochet with the slip stitch. Now, this is my second one, so I'm going to leave my yarn attached, and I'm going to make a little chain one here to keep things all neat and tidy. But what we need to do is we need to add the stitches now for the seeds so that they don't go all the way through both thicknesses because it does look a little messy on the inside. All right, so on the first one I cut and weaved in, I've got my back all taken care of with all my extra strands. Let me show you the back here. We have all these strands here that need to be weaved in, but I'm going to leave the green attached. I'm gonna make that loop a little bit bigger, and then I'm going to grab my black yarn and add my seeds. So we're going to place the seeds going through the second and third stitches, okay? On row two, we have 20 
double crochets. So we're going to put one in every other of those. All right, so let me show you how we do that. We're going to come up in the center of a stitch. It doesn't matter where you start. Make sure you leave a nice tail for weaving in in the back. And then we're going to come up to the stitch of three on row three. And we're going to loop back around like this. And make that seed. And then we'll just go right in where we came from. I do two strands like that. All right. And then I'll go on the back and I'm just going to make a little loop just to make sure that stays secure. All right. Then we'll go to the next two. So here's the next one. Here's the next one. So we'll go in the center of that stitch. And we'll go straight up to row three in the center of the stitch that lines up with that. And we'll do that second loop. I just do the second loop just because it thickens it up and it makes a nice size stitch. Okay, then I'll go to the back and I'll just sort of loop over that just to help it stay. Now don't go all the way to the front. We don't want that little extra thing to show up through the bottom. And then I'll just continue that around. And you should have 10 watermelon seeds. All right. And if you follow row two, you'll go in every other double crochet stitch. All right, so I have two of the complete watermelon slices done. If you want to make the half slice of watermelon, you'll just take your one and you'll fold it in half, line all your edge up, and then you'll do that last row around, okay? Now, if the stitches are the same as the big one, or the full slice, and, and so since I'm going to show you on the full slice, we're just going to line it up, and all you're going to do is you're going to place single crochets around, all right? So we'll line that up, and we'll just go right in that first stitch. And we'll just single crochet around the whole slice, okay? And if you're doing this one, you'll only have half of the row to do. And so for this last row, we're just going to stitch one single crochet in each of the single crochets working all the way around. And you'll do the same thing on the half slice of watermelon. You'll just, like I showed you, fold it together and then one single crochet in each single crochet around. And that gives you two options for hot pads and pot holders. A full slice and a half slice. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to work my way around stitching one single crochet in each of those single crochets, working all the way around. All right, and then I'll join back here and show you how to add the loop. One single crochet in each single crochet around, stitching the front and back together. Same thing on this one. We just folded it and stitched it up. Now we're going to join to that first single crochet with a slip stitch and chain 12. All right, now we're going to join back 
to that same single crochet with a slip stitch and clip our yarn. Alrighty, now I'm going to go in that next stitch and pull that loop to the back, although the front and back look pretty tidy. Alright, and then we'll just take our needle and weave that in. Make sure that loop is stitched on securely. Whoops, yarn got a little... There we go. Alrighty. So I'm just going to go through this and just make sure that that is securely weaved in, stitching back and forth, going through stitches. Because this is a pretty heavy pot holder. It's too thick. Solid cotton yarn can be kind of heavy sometimes. All right, so let's go ahead and get that weaved in better. There, that's much better. Clip that off. And now I have a loop to hang it on a loop to hang this one on. I've got a full slice and a half slice pot holder or hot pad. Double thick. Double thick. <laughs> Aren't they adorable? I just love them. I think they turned out wonderful. And again, I did these in cotton yarn. If you want to use them for decorations and you're not going to put something hot on them or try to carry something hot in your hand, you can do these out of acrylic as well, or any other fiber that you have on hand. So that's our watermelon, hot pad, and pot holder. <music>